Hey, 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 today is Friday the 13th. Ooh, scary kids, scary. Well, hopefully you're not experiencing any bad luck, and it's all good luck today. So you are in luck, though, because the Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, Jeff McAleer once again here as your host of The Daily Dope. Pre ah, presented by, whoa, got that stuck in my throat for a minute. Whoa. Presented by thegaminggang.com, of which I happen to be the Grand Poobah. So yes, today is Friday the 13th. Strangely enough, historically, 13 is really not an unlucky number. Uh, I don't know. So... But I guess over the years, Friday the 13th just uh, got a bad reputation. So hopefully you're having a great day and hopefully uh, you're pretty lucky. So anyway, I've got uh, kind of a short show today. So there's just a little bit of news. I am actually going to be unboxing and taking a look at Istanbul, the dice game for Family Fun Friday, and it is from my friends over at Alderac Entertainment Group. So I will be taking a peek at this in just a few minutes. Do you want to point out, yesterday was crazy. I don't know, you know, I, I, I have to say, I think the power grid here in Yorkville is ridiculously bad because we have power outages constantly. Usually, in the wee hours of the morning, and only for a short period of time. But of course, that means everybody has to go running around changing all the clocks to be correct. So had a power outage in the middle of the stream yesterday. So of course, the power was only out for maybe about 30 seconds. But of course, the router had to reboot. I had to reboot the computer, all these things. So it ended up where the stream was broken up into two parts on YouTube. So the funny thing is, if I, if I end a stream and then start a stream just a few minutes later, YouTube actually combines them, which I was hoping it would do. And of course it didn't. So I do record my streams. So just in case the sound is out of sync a little bit, I can fix it, just re-upload it. Granted, I lose some thumbs up and I lose some, you know, viewers for a video, but I would rather make sure that the sound is in sync, right? Not be off by half a second, quarter of a second, what have you. So anyway, so I'm like, oh, okay, it's no big deal. I've got the two recordings. I'll just combine those together and upload it. Be all good. Well, of course, because the power went out, the first part of the show did not save as a recording. So I had to download that first part from YouTube. And then when I tried to combine the files, it was just a mess. It took me five hours to finally actually get the video full length uploaded onto YouTube. And it was just a disaster. It drove me nuts. It was crazy. So anyway, I've been running around most of the day today uh, trying to work on my father's uh, lawnmower <laughs> to get it fixed. This right on mower changing the blade on it and it's just uh you would think it'd be easy god forbid they'd make it easy for you just to you know take a few things off put the blade on it's ridiculous so i'm a little little sweaty down here today so i apologize if i've got a bit of a sheen anyway do want to point out that this is a live stream so if you're watching on youtube where honestly where else would you be watching and you're watching live there is chat available, so feel free to say hello. If you have a question about Istanbul the Dice Game or you want to see something a little closer up when we're taking a peek at it, feel free to ask, and I will certainly respond. As I mentioned, I only have a little bit of news today. It seemed to be kind of a quiet news day, and some of the news I ran across are sort of like, eh, I don't know how excited I am about that. But there are three items that I do want to talk about today, and... 
First off is a game that's on the horizon from Breaking Games that looks pretty interesting. And it's a 3D city building game. And I've got the dope on Expand City. Ha! Expand City. The skyline's the limit. Expand City is an upwards moving strategy game in which players build a 3D city together. Players work together to form the city grid, all the while trying to shape the city in order to grant them the most valuable buildings and contracts. In the end, players finish a beautiful, one-of-a-kind city on the table. Expand City is a city-building game in which players both collaborate and compete to build a thriving metropolis block by block. Lay down residential and commercial tiles, then claim them with your stackable building blocks to break ground on towers that will rise high above the playing field. Score extra points by building your common city buildings like banks, schools, and parks. You can also get a leg up on the opposition by working on secretly held contract cards that offer players unique and challenging tasks to complete for bonus points. Cities expand both horizontally and vertically as the game progresses, and no two cities will ever be alike. Expansity is for 2-4 to four players, ages 10 and up, and plays in 45-60 to 60 minutes. The game will carry an MSRP of $60 when it arrives in August. Gotta say, I like the, uh, the 3D look of Expansity. I, I kind of dig that, and it looks as if that those, uh, those like block tiles that we see that the buildings are built on, looks like there's probably some sort of a, kind of a random generation or as you're expanding the city outward, you may be drawing random tiles to build those buildings on. So I kind of like that. It's going to add a lot to the replayability. Do you want to say that uh, I do have, uh, well, I don't can't say I have an appointment yet. I am working with some PR people to actually meet with Breaking Games at Gen Con. So I will definitely find out more about uh, expand city then also since it's family fun friday let's talk about some family fun games because calliope games has revealed three new titles which are part of their titans line there are uh three titles i gotta be honest one of them really caught my eye and that's spy master and here's the dope as the head of a shadowy intelligence agency you must manipulate agents around the world using valuable intelligence to complete missions. Crucial choices, daring actions, and perfect timing will allow your agency to manipulate the world and win the game. Spymaster takes place over five rounds. Each round begins with intelligence being gathered using the I split, you choose mechanism, with the Spymaster player divvying the available intelligence cards into files, after which the players go around and take one stack in a clockwise order, ending with the Spy Master. By playing intelligence cards from hand, players take turns moving agent meeples, both their own and ownerless freelance agents, into positions so that they can control the areas, meet mission requirements, and claim the mission cards. At the end of five rounds, the player with the highest value and accomplished missions, along with bonuses for remaining intelligence in hand, wins. Spymaster is going to be for two to six players ages eight and up and will play in about 30 to 60 minutes. The game is set for a Q4 release, so right now there's no MSRP info available. And I do not believe that Spymaster and the other two new releases in the Titan line are going to be at Gen Con. Because a lot of times we'll see you know, a game coming out you know, September sometimes October, those show up at Gen Con. They'll have some, some advanced copies for sale. I don't think that's going to be the case for Calliope Games. I do wish I had some more images to share, but all I've got right now on this is the, uh, the box top art. But it does seem like this could be a fairly interesting game for younger players with kind of a cool theme to it. All right, and then finally, I know there are lots of people out there who are just dying to get their hands on Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay from my friends over at Cubicle 7 across the pond. 
And it was supposed to already be out. Yes, it was supposed to already be available. But it's not. It is close. C7 is getting there. The release is close. And they had something to say about it. So here's the dope. We've still got some additional things to do before we can release the PDF. But it won't be too much longer and are emailing all pre-order customers with an update on that progress. Thanks for your patience while we get the last details right. We'd rather not make the same mistake again and give an estimated date of which we aren't 100% sure. But it's almost there and pre-order customers have a little something that will make up for the wait. So I do believe that Cubicle 7 is uh, sending out something in addition right now to folks with a pre-order. There are some factors out of our control even at the end of the process, and there are always calls to be made between getting it done and getting it right. We tend to err towards prioritizing getting it right, but we appreciate that it can be frustrating for those who are waiting. But we're making this the best game we can, and we are very close, and the PDF will be ready as soon as possible. Thanks for your patience and support. I do believe you can still get a pre-order in. I am not positive. I believe you can. I believe you can still get a pre-order for the hardcover core book and PDF combo for $59.99. So there are some RPG releases at Gen Con that people are really, really pumped about. Two of them happen to be Warhammer. So first, of course, is Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay from Cubicle 7. Then we've got Warhammer 40K Wrath and Glory, which is coming from Ulysses North America. We've got, I think, I'm not positive, but I think the Expanse role-playing game is going to be available from Green Ronin. I think. And of course... We do have the playtest edition for uh, Pathfinder 2.0, or second edition, I guess we could call it too, that will be releasing at Gen Con. Of course, for the playtest Pathfinder, you had to have already pre-ordered. Now, the PDF will be available for free, so you've got that too. So quite a few RPGs that really have people pumped that will be arriving at Gen Con. And according to Cubicle 7, from my understanding, they are still figuring that Warhammer uh, Fantasy Roleplay will release at Gen Con. So, pretty cool. All right, so as I mentioned, not a whole lot of news today uh, that really jumped out at me. So I've also been uh, really getting inundated with San Diego Comic-Con stuff, and I've been trying to on one hand, try to set up our coverage for San Diego, as well as set up coverage for Gen Con, because Gen Con will actually start a couple of weeks after I get back from, uh, actually, I don't even think it's two weeks. Uh, not really. Uh, let me double check the calendar here real quick. No, it's actually, uh, yeah, it's, it's about a week and a half after I get back from San Diego Comic-Con. So pretty crazy. So uh, I do want to point out there's going to be some eclectic coverage from San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, I never like to go and cover stuff that like a thousand outlets are tackling at the same time. I like to do some kind of unusual stuff. So look forward to that. Of course, on Twitter, I'll be sharing different things that are going on as well. I'm trying to set up some interviews and uh, check out some exclusive stuff. So should be pretty cool. I always have a blast at uh, at Comic Con and Gen Con. Gen Con's really my favorite. It's my favorite convention every year. But San Diego Comic Con's pretty amazing too. It's just so many people. It's like 140,000 people there at one time. So anyway, on Monday I will have a show. I will be doing a live show on Monday. I am going to be reviewing. Tales from the Loop from Free League and Modifius Entertainment. I did a deep dive into uh, doing a first look at this last week, and uh, I will be sharing my thoughts on Monday. 
then there will not be any other live shows the rest of that week and into the next week. So I'm not going to have a live show until Tuesday the 24th is pretty much what I'm planning. And then probably about a week of shows. And then once again, boom, I'm off to Gen Con. So uh, I am going to do my best this week to get some standalone episodes. Just do some unboxings, some, some quick reviews. I've got some smaller games, probably like a 15, 20 minute review on. Of course, knowing me, how I ramble on. I don't know, <laughs> might end up being longer than that. But uh, I'm gonna get those done and kind of pop those out uh, periodically when I'm out in San Diego. Because usually so much thing, so many things are going on at Comic-Con, I don't have time to actually post stuff from the show. But anyway, so that's what's going on next week. So let's, uh, let's jump on into the unboxing for Istanbul, the dice game from Good old Alderac Entertainment, or as I like to say, AEG. It's, and I'm going to say, I'm going to mispronounce these names, so I apologize right up front. I think uh, that's just a given with me. The game is designed by Rudiger Dorn, with art provided by Andreas Resch. The game is four two to four players, ages eight and up, and plays in around 20 to 40 minutes. The title is available right now, and it does carry an MSRP of $29.99. Let's head on over. Let's get a peek here at Istanbul, the dice game. So, according to the back, I eh, might as well grab the reading specs. You know what? Let me get rid of the, the shrink wrap. I may not even need to put the old reading glasses on. Once I get rid of the glare... All right, let's get rid of that shrink there. It says, welcome to the Bazaar of Istanbul. Welcome to the Bazaar of Istanbul. Well, it says it twice, okay? Are you ready for a trade competition? If so, you'll need to acquire the coveted rubies faster than your competitors. You are not alone. Your assistants will collect goods and money for you. I, for a second, I thought it's like gold and money. I was like, isn't gold money? Use your income wisely to invest and improve the abilities to save for purchasing rubies. With a little bit of luck and the right strategy, you will be victorious and become the master of the trade guild. I'm the master. All right. So basically, you're going to roll your dice. You're going to carry out two actions with your dice and you're going to collect the money. Money, money, money. Because money makes the world go round. This is a standalone dice game set in the world of Istanbul, which is a board game, an award-winning board game, which uh, I want to say came out quite a few years ago. I mean, not like 30 years ago, but I mean, I think it's more than 10 years ago. Okay, so we've got uh, some advertisements from AEG. Uh-oh, love letter. Love letter's gone. Love letter's no longer available. It moved on to, uh, wasn't it Z-Man Games picked it up? So, aha, and of course we got Smash Up. I have the, uh, the latest expansion for Smash Up with the four new factions, uh, and I, wa I don't think it's out yet. It's, uh, oops, you did it again. So it's four factions that, uh, strangely enough, had not been covered yet that I guess were fairly obvious. All right, so we've got the rule book here. Oh, one thing changing, you know, got to change the direction here. I do have a game that uh, I got from North Star Games that has been under embargo. It's under embargo until the 16th. And what I'm going to try to do this weekend is I'm going to actually shoot uh, kind of a first look video at it because I only played it once at Origins uh, for a press event. And I don't do reviews on just one playthrough of a game. So I am going to do an unboxing. That should be out on the 16th. I'm not even going to tell you what the name of the game is. So you're going to have to check it out. On the 16th, I should have that video out there. But we're talking about AEG and Istanbul the Dice Game. So pretty cool artwork here. So it's talking about an introduction, the components, an overview and goal of the game. This I am going to put my reading specs on for, there we go. 
You are a trader in the Istanbul Bazaar with the goal of being the first to acquire six rubies. In a four-player game, five rubies. You'll need money and goods to purchase rubies, and for those, you must depend on your assistants, who are represented by the dice. Okay, so uh, the six icons indicate bizarre cards, lira, and four types of goods. Cloth, fruit, spices, and jewelry. Okay, so we get a game set up. So it's showing us how to set the game up. And we got credits. Got a sequence of play. So take income from your mosque tiles, if applicable. You're going to roll the dice. You're going to carry out your actions, and you're going to pass the five dice to the next player clockwise. So it's talking about the different actions. What actions are available? Discarding a uh, required number and type of goods to get that ruby. Talking about the game end. As soon as any player has collected at least six rubies, complete the current round so that each player has taken an equal number of turns and then end the game. Player with the most rubies wins. If there's a tie, the tie players sell their goods markers for three lira each and their crystals for two lira each and add those coins to their saved lira. Tied player with the most lira wins. If it's still a tie, then the players share the victory. So we're seeing the mosque tiles, bizarre cards. And then uh, talking about the board game itself. So, oh, and the uh, various expansions. I have heard through the grapevine, through the interwebs, that uh, there are people out there who are enjoying the dice game more than the original game. And I know when I talked to John Zinzer originally at Origins about this, he had talked about how the dice game, he wanted to make sure that the dice game wasn't just a complete rehash of the board game, just simply as a dice game. So there are some new wrinkles to this game with, uh, with the dice. All right, so we had the rule book there. What was that, about 10 pages? Oh, I'm sorry, there were eight pages. Wow, I thought it was longer than it is. So we've got uh, some punch boards here. So I believe these are the mosque tiles that we saw. This is the money. Uh, these are goods. So we've got different goods here that uh, are represented by the dice. Well, you've got the green, yellow, blue, and red as far as collecting the goods. And these are dual-sided. And I, think, I guess these mosque cards are probably uh, in a pile, maybe face down, so you're choosing them at random. And we've got uh, gems, jewelry, something like that, uh, fruit, uh, fabrics, I believe those are, cloth, I think. So once again, more of these mask cards. More money, more money, more money, more money. And we've got one more punch board. Okay, so then we've got uh, a center board. I think this is the marketplace. I believe this is supposed to be the marketplace here. So just like so. And it's dual sided. So let's see what we see. Okay, so this is for two or three players. Because I'm, I'm taking a guess right there, right? Showing a little picture of a person there. It says two or three. And then that says four. So this should be for a four player game. This is for two or three players. So we've got that. Real nice, too. Very, very nice. So we've got different crystals here. Looks like we've just got uh, blue and red. So those are the, the crystals there. These are the rubies, no doubt. And then uh, blue must be some other sort of marker. We've got uh, these, I think, are the market cards. I think every player is going to get one of these. Yep, because there's four of these. So I believe that's going to tell you what kind of actions you can perform. So it looks like maybe this is like two of a kind, three, uh, three of a kind, four of a kind, as far as the, um, the colored uh, dice sides here. Got the money. 
So let's see. Looks like they're identical. Yep. They are identical. So just uh, can those on out. So those are the player aids there. We got some baggies for the tokens and counters. Oh, talk about a little Euro cards, right? Little Euro game size cards. So let's get these open up here. And of course, I can't get it. <laughs> Come on, you. There we go. Always have that handy dandy hobby knife around and always put the cap back on <laughs> the hobby knife. So I don't accidentally stab myself. All right, so we've got the different cards here. Looks like we've got a few of the same, or at least very similar. I'm going to be uh, completely truthful. I never played Istanbul. Um, not that, you know, it's not as if I have anything against it. It's just uh, I don't tend to play a lot of Euro style games. Now, that doesn't mean I have it. I despise them uh, for some strange reason over the years. People have this impression that I, I just I hate Euro style games. And that is not true. Uh, I am not a fan of games where you feel like you have absolutely no interaction with other players, that your the actions you take do not affect other players in the game. That's what I'm not a big fan of. Now, there are plenty of Euro games out there that whatever actions you take or the strategies you utilize do affect the other players. So I dig that. It's just I'm not real big on... The, the sorts of games where it's kind of like kind of like a puzzle you're just you're playing your you're just by yourself really playing your piece of the puzzle and you're playing almost as if you're in a vacuum that I'm not a fan of but uh, I have ab absolutely no beef with euro style mechanics whatsoever uh, just reviewed Raiders of the North Sea that's a euro game really liked it uh, clank you know, a deck building adventure that is very Euro-y as far as a deck building game. We love it. So there are a lot of different, uh, even like going back old school, like Havana from Rio Grande Games. Really, really enjoy that. It's a pretty light game, but so all right. So we've got these uh, different cards. I, I believe these are the market cards. These were, uh, I think I said these are market cards. These are just player aids. I believe these are the market cards here. And then we've got the dice. All right, so uh, they are not cut dice, but we've got 10. No, we got nine. Okay, so we got nine dice. And we've got, let's see. Okay, so the, we've got the red, which I believe is the cloth. We've got the green. Is green like food? No, yellow, I think, is food. Where's green? Uh, greens looks almost like goods of some sort. Then we've got the blue, which are is like jewelry. And then we've got the yellow, which is uh, like fruits. And then the gray represents... Not sure. Uh, I know this represents money, so if you get that, you're going to get money. Let's see, what does the gray represent? Let's go back to the rule book real quick. I was talking about the die sides. Six icons. Uh, bizarre cards, that's what it is. This represents being able to draw a bizarre card. All right, so we've got the dice. Nice. These are like really light dice. Uh, they are plastic. For a second, I thought they were kind of a wood die because sometimes those wooden dice are really, really light. But no, these are plastic and they are super, super light. So we've got the nine dice. We've got the market cards. Put this all back in here. We've got the rubies and then these blue crystals. We have the market board. We've got the three 
punch boards of tokens and money. And um, I think those are... Oh, those were the mosque tiles. The, I, or maybe they call them mosque cards. All right, then we got the player aid. Got a bunch of baggies as well as the rules. And that is what we find in Istanbul, the dice game. When we take everything outside the box. As I pointed out before, Istanbul, the dice game is available now. It is uh, for two to four players, ages eight and up, and games tend to run about 20 to 40 minutes. And it does carry an MSRP of $29.99. So I'm not sure if I'm going to get to do any real gaming this weekend. So it'll probably be a little bit before I have an opportunity to get a review of Istanbul out there maybe a week after I get back, so probably during the week between coming back from Comic-Con and heading off to Gen Con, I should probably be able to get a review out. So it looks kind of neat. Uh, I kind of kind of dig uh, kind of trading games sometimes, but uh, we'll find out. I don't know. All right. So as I mentioned, when uh, I started the show, it was going to be a pretty quick show today. And that is it for Friday the 13th. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed out there that everybody has lots of good luck today, not bad luck. So when you're not watching The Daily Dope or other videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to go visit thegaminggang.com for the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Well, by now you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. I will be back on Monday, and I will be reviewing Tales from the Loop, the role-playing game from Free League and Modifius Entertainment. So until then, have a very happy and very safe weekend. I will be back on Monday, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you liked this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again... Thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.